When two champions confront each other over a period of time, sports history is often written. When two formidable heavyweights match up, their names become linked forever. These classic rivalries set the standard. And in this decade, only two champions can measure themselves a cut above the rest, a class by themselves. This year is no different. Larry Bird continues to lead the Boston Celtics. They own the best record in the East, lifted up as well by the long arms of Kevin McHale. In the West, the Lakers' Magic Johnson is scoring more this year. He's on an MVP roll, and that's helped the Lakers to the best record in the West. Other than a December loss to the Lakers, the Celtics are unbeaten in Boston Garden. Today, the rematch is in L.A. They won't meet again unless another title is at stake. There's no late arriving crowd at the Forum in Inglewood, California today. These fans have been in place because today it's the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. And that's all you need to say. The best records in the NBA, identical. 37 and 12 for both of these clubs and the winner today will be able to say they have the best record in the league. Good afternoon again, everyone. I am Dick Stockton, and this game is a special game indeed. As you know, the Lakers and Celtics meet only twice a year. Earlier this year, the Lakers snapped the Celtics' 48-game winning streak in Boston Garden. They want to prove that was no fluke, and the Celtics want to return the favor by winning this afternoon. A big story on Friday. The Lakers may have fitted the last piece into a championship puzzle with their acquisition of Michael Thompson from the San Antonio Spurs. They didn't have to give up much to get him, and a big man that should complement the team. My partner is Tommy Heinsohn. What does Thompson's addition mean? Well, I think uh, the same way you do, Dick. I think it's a potential championship move. Uh, they've been laboring along with a 39-year-old center and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. All of a sudden, they get a perfect backup guy to help them. Michael Thompson, big guy who can score inside, rebound, and play that tough inside defense. What more could you ask? The Boston Celtics are playing their best basketball of the year, and they're doing it on the road as of late. How do you look at today's game, Tommy? I think whoever controls the pace of this game, particularly early, will be very, very important. The Lakers like to upbeat the game and try and soften up the big people of the other team. The Celtics want to conserve the energies of a Kevin McHale, a Larry Bird, and a Robert Parrish. So whoever can control the up and down part of this ball game is going to have a big step towards winning it. Sit back and relax and enjoy one of the great matchups in all of sports. The Celtics and the Lakers coming right up. It's the NBA on CBS. Today's game from the Forum in Inglewood, California is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Visa. Accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. Here are the starting lineups for the game. Two great starting fives competing for the Boston Celtics in the front court. Kevin McHale, Larry Bird, and Robert Parrish at center. And the guards, Dennis Johnson and Danny Ainge. Casey Jones. For the Lakers, their front court, James Worthy. A.C. Green in his second year having a fine year in the 39-year-old Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Byron Scott and Irvin Magic Johnson in the backcourt for head coach Pat Riley. And the officials working today, Jess Kersey and Paul Mahalik. And we're set to go. The Celtics in green, the Lakers in gold. Celtics, keep in mind, have won for the last six regular season games here at the Forum. And the Lakers won a fast pace this game. Get those three men in action quickly. McHale, he gets in action quickly. He is now the Celtics' leading scorer. He surpassed Larry Bird, and it's 2-0 Boston. Dennis Johnson is on Byron Scott. Ainge starts out on Magic Johnson. The two centers hooked up. Block shot by Parrish. Kareem, the number one low post option in the set offense for the Lakers. Now, Magic Johnson is guarding Dennis Johnson, so the Lakers are defensing the guards differently than the Celtics. A.C. Green is on Bird now, who gets the turnover. Scott. That's the Lakers in action, Dick. Get that ball up. 
No delay. Go all the way. 2-2. Two -two, less than a minute gone by. Green is on McHale. Magic doubles, leaving Dennis Johnson wide open. McHale there, and he converts with those long arms, and it's 4-2. to two. Everybody doubles Kevin McHale. Byron Scott, who's a three-point threat. The Lakers are the best three-point shooting club because of Cooper and Byron Scott. Interesting right now. Magic Johnson against Danny Ainge in a low post. A.C. Green is open. He's having a big year. He's emerged in the second season. The rook rookie last year out of Oregon State. Worthy on Bird. And they're going to call steps against Bird. Worthy right with him. A real terrific challenge to play against Larry Bird. He tries to outthink everybody. He uses this trip as a personal showcase. Historically, he's had big games on what is the midst of an eight-game Western and Texas trip for Boston. Green with the fake. Bird didn't go for it. Byron Scott misses. Parrish gets the rebound. Boston will try and slow it down. If the fast break is there, they'll take it. Ainge. One of the best three-point shooters in the game, Danny Ainge, gives the Celtics a three-point lead. In his best season, I'll tell you, he's shooting that three-pointer like it's a layup with that kind of confidence. Kareem, not doubled. Celtics do the job defensively inside, and Danny Ainge comes back, pushes it up. Fake, Dennis Johnson. And Parrish misses the tipping. A.C. Green. And we'll have traveling called against the Lakers. We'll turn it over to Boston. Here's a guy who's having a most valuable player kind of season so far. He's diversified the offense, Pat Riley. And the guy that's picking up a lot of the scoring slack is Magic Johnson. Double on McHale. But the Celtics know how to find the open man. Penetrating is Dennis Johnson. And it's now 9-4 to four Celtics. Magic outside hits. Magic Johnson went from 18 to a 24-point average from last season to this. I'll tell you, he is hitting that outside shot. You don't want to double off of him. Nearly three minutes gone by opening period. Bird backs in and scores over Worthy. Yeah, playing Bird one-on-one, -on -one, that means Worthy's got to get the job done. Magic comes right back and hits another one. A two-point shot for Magic Johnson. Both teams shooting well in the early going. Casey Jones wants more than one pass before the shot is taken to break the rhythm of the fast break of the Lakers. Worthy come all, coming out all the way to guard Bird. Kareem helped the turnover to Byron Scott. Danny Ames fouled him. It's a one-shot foul. Uh, Casey Jones, I'll tell you, has done an outstanding job coaching around some difficult problems this year, integrating a bench. They made some trades. And he's got the Darren Days, the great kites, making some real contributions this year. Foul was on Dennis Johnson. His first, the Celtics by three. And no basket. And another Celtic foul, this one on aim. So the Celtic guards each have picked up one. The toughest challenge for the Celtics will be to get three men back quickly to, to blunt the fastest three-man attack in the NBA. The Lakers use it so effectively. Magic is trying to post up Ainge, moves away, and hits his third shot in a row. He is three for three, six points for Magic Johnson. And now slowing it up is Dennis Johnson. They don't want to get into a fast-paced game, as Tom pointed out. They want to play waltz time. Dennis Johnson penetrating and is fouled inside, and he was hit hard. What a challenge to Danny Ainge. Magic Johnson, much bigger than he is. And they're not going to double, I don't think, Magic Johnson because he's such a great passer. So it's all going to be Danny Ainge trying to stop Magic. And he's got a lot of moves down there. Foul was on Worthy. And here's Dennis Johnson, who's a native of Los Angeles and used to come to the forum as a youth watching Clyde Frazier. Maybe that's why Dennis Johnson... They, his name is a fine defensive player before anything else. And today they're kind of worried about a nagging injury, an ankle injury that might affect his mobility, and he's been playing great for them without that injury. Four minutes gone by, first period. 13 to 10, Boston. 
They doubled Kareem. Celtics got a hand on the pass inside out, and as a result, get the ball back. Green defending against McHale does a fine job. A.C. Green defends McHale inside. But coming out of the pack on the turnover, Dennis Johnson the Bird. Parrish. Celtics love to get Robert Parrish out on the fast break. They're trying to take the legs away from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar by racing him up the court. And that's the only time I think the Celtics want to run in this game. You got it. 7.20 remaining, first period. Byron Scott misses in the corner. Quick pass out by Bird. Aim on the sideline. Bird the trailer, also a three-point threat. Isolate McHale and Kareem one-on-one. -on -one. And McHale loses the ball. You know, I think that's a great matchup, that Riley. If he puts Kareem on Kevin McHale, because Kareem is so tall, that uh, McHale can hardly see the basket. Well, he did that in the All-Star game a bit, didn't they? And it was very, very effective. But he wants to keep A.C. Green on him, so Kareem does not get in foul trouble. The Celtics lead 15-10, to 10, and all five of their starters have scored. Danny Manning, the all-the-way breakaway Jayhawk, leads Kansas against St. John's and the point guard precision of Mark Jackson next Saturday on CBS Sports. The Celtics really try and put a physical test on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You see Robert Parrish, who's going to take off up the court, and they're going to try and tire out Kareem. So you watch Robert Parrish taking off at all possibilities, and they are very alert to this situation, the Boston Celtics. Parrish out in front. A.C. Green has to make the adjustment to come back into the play by Parrish way ahead of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But you're going to see A.C. Green now get back quickly on defense and really make a spectacular defensive move, forcing Kevin McHale off the good angle to the basket. That's great defense. A.C. Green replacing Kurt Rambis in the lineup this year for the Lakers has been their leading rebounder, especially off the offensive glass, and uh, the Lakers feel he still can be more selfish. They like to see him take that open shot more than just look for the pass. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he could have a big day for the Lakers today because Larry Bird is guarding him, and Larry likes to slough off people, and Green might get on that offensive board an awful lot. Worthy. Driving down the middle on a pass from Kareem is fouled. And Bird committing his first personal foul. You know, when Kareem is in the low post, Dick, it's awfully difficult to double. It's almost like giving up a layup because he's such a great passer. Just under seven minutes remaining in the opening period. Good passing by the Lakers, leaving A.C. Green wide open. Green has four. Magic with six leads the Lakers, who trail 15 to 12. And that's the type of shot that A.C. Green would not take last year. Worthy on Bird. They go in to Parrish. Doubled. The open man. Magic is Dennis Johnson. Now it's Bird, who goes for three. That'll quiet him in a hurry. Celtics with Ainge, Bird, and Dennis Johnson on the outside. you got to get up on him. Lakers pushing it up, want to get on offense in a hurry. Double team on Kareem. Oh. Worthy with the rebound. Missed an easy shot inside. And it's Celtics ball, last touched by Byron Scott. But did you see Kareem hustle on that offensive rebound? He's 39, right? <laughs> 39 going on 89. He's the third leading scorer, but he's bulked up, and he's a bit better on some key rebounds. I would say he's 39 going on 34. Maybe he'll play till he's 99. Bird hits his second in a row, has seven points, and the Celtics open their lead to eight. That will get Worthy's attention. Dennis Johnson is all over Byron Scott. Ames looking to double team. No basket and the foul. How old is this guy? I want to tell you, this is amazing to me. Now, you watch Kareem. This is some of the areas of basketball that people questioned that he would do when he was younger. Here he is, 39, banging like the Blazers for the offensive rebound. Harris the foul, 14 fouls on Boston, only one on the Lakers so far. Magic. And call for the offensive foul. I mean to tell you, when he goes in to that low post, you are really in trouble. I wouldn't want to be playing him. Danny Ainge has a tough challenge. Lakers have only two fast break opportunities so far. One of the reasons why the Celtics have an eight-point lead. Harris 
Double. Magic. One step gets back to Dennis Johnson. Harris has the ball knocked away, and McHale gets the rebound in the basket. And the Celtics lead by 10 points, and they'll call a blocking foul against Dennis Johnson, and that will be his second personal foul. Well, Scott ends up where he's going to have to do a job on McHale, and what does he do? Gets out of his way and lets McHale just step in for that easy rebound. Magic Johnson is on the line. He's carried the scoring burden. He had 40 points against Indiana on Friday. Did not practice yesterday because of a sore Achilles tendon. The key to Magic Johnson is his dribbling ability and his ability to keep his head up while he's dribbling to see all the options that are open on the court. Under five minutes remaining first period. Bird has it tipped away by Worthy. Lakers on the break. Ainge did a good job of short-circuiting Magic Johnson. So far, the Celtics are getting three men back to blunt the three-man attack of the Lakers. Open is Worthy. Ainge, and now it's a three-on-two for the Celtics, intercepted by Byron Scott. That's a big turnover right there. They gave away two that time. Byron Scott, great pull-up jump shooter off the fast break. Bird baseline. No foul call. Four on two. L.A. Magic. Quickly to McHale, and Green knocks it away. Magic. Tommy, the Lakers are playing the physical game against the Celtics right now. They score them in clusters, Dick. You can't let them get started, and they've let the dragon out of the box. Eighty-seven's hottest golfer, two-time tournament winner, Corey Pavin, takes on a formidable field at the Los Angeles Open. It's the PGA on CBS Sports next weekend. Byron Scott playing the eyes of Danny Ainge. He's going to get right into the passing lane as he sees the pass going to Bird. Steps right in with that quickness and up the court he goes. Now the Celtics forcing a fast break. There's three defenders back. And Kevin McHale, not a nifty dribbler, should have just held up. But look what the Lakers do with it. Come right at the defense and immediately Magic Johnson into the lane. That's fast break basketball and opportunity fast break basketball. Magic is five for five and 12 points and two assists as the Lakers have run off eight consecutive points and they're getting their fast break going as you see lately. So with 3.48 to go into the ball game for the Lakers is Michael Cooper and you know he'll be watching Larry Bird. Kurt Rambis comes in as well. He'll be assigned to Kevin McHale. So the Lakers going to their bench early here. Watch out, bro. 22 to 20. Scott all over Ames. Four on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson with a wild shot goes in with one second on the clock. Magic. Cooper goes for three. Bird getting down court. Ames down the middle. Celtics are getting caught up in the Laker tempo. 26 to 20. Celtics. Kareem, Johnson, Cooper, plenty of time for the three. He's missed two now from that distance. And another fast break. Danny Ainge on the front end. And a foul. And Ainge was hit hard. Michael Cooper. And this game is starting out with the kind of physical style we have seen in NBA Finals past. You sure this isn't Daytona? I'm telling you, they're zipping it up down the court. Here's Ainge, eludes one man. But Cooper says, I can block anything, but Nick Danny Ainge in the process. Cooper's foul. Two team fouls on the Lakers, the Celtics in the penalty. You know, the more the Celtics respond with fast breaks, even though they are easy baskets at this stage of the game, the more the big guys in the Celtics are going to tire out. Danny Ainge has scored 50 points in his last two games. One out of two from the line, and it's 27 to 20, Boston. 
and Greg Kite has come in. Perhaps Casey Jones, thinking exactly the way you did, has come in for Robert Parrish. He'll have to guard Kareem, but he'll get help. The pass intended for Rambis thrown away. Greg Kite doing a great job on defense that time. And I'll tell you, he has been more effective the last time, the last couple of weeks, than he has in any prior season. Blocking out, rebounding. Cooper commits the foul. And here's Kite on defense. Look at him fight the pick. Gets into the play with Kareem. Here's the big double team. And Dennis Johnson stepped in beautifully. Two fouls on Cooper, and McHale draws another Laker foul. Kurt Rambis committing that one. Getting back to Greg Kite, he's playing more now. And, of course, he's a guy who really hasn't gotten much respect. You know, in Indiana, on the box score, they listed him as Tom Kite, the golfer. So he has to gain <laughs> respect one way or another. <laughs> well, he swings like uh, a golfer <laughs> while he's out here. But he has got one of those wide bodies that spread out and take up room. Kite in for Parrish. So it'll be interesting to see how the Celtics do when they go to their bench. Right now they have the comfort of a nine-point lead. All Casey wants to do after the bench starts to be inserted is keep the lead where it is. McHale picking up Magic. Cooper gets the offensive rebound, snatched it away from his teammate Rambis. Magic goes in and draws the foul. He went in hard to the basket. This is a hard, tough, inside driving game so far. Well, Magic has so developed his game that when he hits that outside shot, you've got to go race at him, and he's got that dribbling ability and penetration to get into the middle of the defense, and baby, nobody reads defenses better than Magic. He has 13 points. He has had only three triple-doubles so far this year, but he's been concentrating a lot more on scoring than rebounding. Back to the two passes, and then a shot. Celtic lead is 7, 29 to 22. Offensive foul against Boston. Larry Bird, his second personal foul. Celtics trying to take advantage of a mismatch, but Cooper using his fast feet, making it difficult for the passer to make the play, but they call a foul on Bird. Cooper and Magic Johnson in the backcourt. A delay of game warning on Boston. Ainge on Rambis. There's McHale. 148 remaining in the first period. Celtics have largely limited the Laker fast break, thus a 29-22 lead. Ainge, air ball, but there's Bird on the other side. Finds Ainge for a short banker. Tipped up, Kite missed it. Magic to Scott Kareem, coming down on the wing. But here's Byron. Celtics pushing it up. You know, when they take the outside shot, the Lakers and there's a long rebound that's allowing the Celtics to get their fast break going blocking foul on Danny Ainge magic and Danny Ainge hit the floor hard that's the second foul a little banging going on bodies all over the place as magic pushing it up Ainge trying to take the charge he does Michael Thompson Gets a big hand from the crowd, acquired from San Antonio. He will wear number 43 and have his name on his uniform. They'll do that for him. But today he has to wear the double zeros. He came in last night, underwent a physical, and went over plays earlier with Bill Bertka, Laker assistant, and here he is in the game in the first period. And they were only going to give him a couple of plays, and he responded so quickly to what they were doing. Bertka says, here's all the plays. You're ready. 29-24, and Magic Johnson has 16 of the Lakers' 24 points. Nearly a minute remaining in the opening stanza. They'll call Worthy for the push, his second personal foul. Four on Michael Thompson. He's a big man who can play two positions in the front court, and he's smart, he can play defense, and a former teammate of Kevin McHale's at Minnesota. It'll give him uh, another version of the Twin Towers with Kareem and Michael Thompson in there, but I think his primary use with this ball club will be to back up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and play some significant minutes. Robert Parrish got a breather, and he'll come in for Kevin McHale, so 
They rotate the front court. Kite stays in the game. Casey Jones coaching in this ball club is like a violinist playing a finely tuned violin. He's always afraid that a string will break. <laughs> and he's been precariously hoping that another one wouldn't break. He's lost Wedman and Walt. Worthy with a good fake on Ames. Goes baseline in a Wor hurry. Worthy alive knowing a mismatch was there. Took advantage of Danny Ames. Under a minute to go in the first period. End to end action. And a lot of physical contact. Like there, Dennis Johnson fouled by Michael Thompson. Now here was the scene at 8.30 this morning as Bill Burke went over those minimum of plays with the new man, Michael Thompson. And Bill Burke told me up in the press room that uh, they only figured to give him one or two plays, but all of a sudden he responded so nicely and understood what Burke was trying to do that he gave him all the play patterns, and he said, you're ready to play, and uh, we'll go to you. Played most of his career with Portland, traded to San Antonio for this season, and now a Laker. Dennis Johnson misses the first free throw. 37 seconds remaining in the first period. Matt Riley said last year that this man was at peace with his game, in total control of what he was doing on the court, and he hasn't changed much this year, Dennis Johnson. There's the time, and 16 on the 24-second shot clock till the end of this period. Magic Johnson, second effort. He posted up Danny Ainge, as he's been trying to do throughout the game, and has 18 points in this first period. Just trying to stop Magic Johnson on a fast break is tough enough, but now when he's getting the ball close to the basket, you got problems. Celtics playing for the last shot. You see the time. Bird. Dennis Johnson for three. And that'll do it. Magic Johnson has kept the Lakers in this game with 18 points and brilliant play. But the Celtics, who had a 10-point lead, will go in 32-28 after one at the Forum. CBS Sports coverage of the National Basketball Association is sponsored by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new go-anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. And by Rolaids for acid indigestion or heartburn, Rolaids spells relief. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn here at the Forum in Inglewood where the Celtics, who have crushed their first three opponents on a Western trip averaging 130 points, lead the Lakers, who have only won six of their last ten, but have dropped just a pair of games at the Forum in a hard-fought first period in which the Celtics lead 32 to 28. Even though the Lakers are trailing right now, Dick, I think they got the pace of the first quarter the way they wanted it. Darren Day has come into the ball game, giving Larry Bird a rest. And Michael Thompson gets his first points in a Laker uniform. So much for double zero. Kareem on the bench did not score in the first period. Harris working against Thompson as the ball slapped away. And they'll call a foul against the Lakers. Here they are, the first points for Michael. Not his last, I'm sure. Gets good position on Robert Parrish, right down by the box. A little swing back to the baseline, a la Kareem, and that hook shot right through before Parrish can get to a shooting hand. McHale comes into the ball game replacing Kite, so the front line now is Darren Day, McHale, and Parrish. Bird scored nine to lead the Celtics in the first period. And while the substitutes were in there, they lost some ground on their lead, the Lakers. Parrish. And Robert Parrish gives the Celtics a 34-30 lead. When Greg Kite came in, the Celtics were up by seven. So they lost a couple of points off their lead, and now an illegal defense has been called against the Celtics. That's the warning. A technical next time around. Danny Ainge had dropped too far to try and get to the double team of Worthy should he get the ball. Celtics come into this game with the second best road record in the NBA, just behind the Lakers. Magic posting up Ainge. Ainge the rebound. Danny Ainge said, I thought I was a guard. Why am I playing low post defense so much? 
Ainge because he's 6'5 and Magic 6'9. Ainge has four rebounds, by the way. Darren Day, who's been a good acquisition for the Celtics off the bench. Dennis Johnson misses Rambis quickly into the hands of Magic. Now Cooper. Cooper missed the line drive attempt. And they call the foul on Michael Cooper. He went after Dennis Johnson and the ball. The Lakers fast break doesn't necessarily mean layups as it does to most teams. They'll put up, pull up and shoot jumpers from 20 feet. Well, Tommy, Michael Cooper now has picked up three fouls. He'll have to come out, and Byron Scott goes in. So one of the key operatives off the Laker bench is in foul trouble. And a guy that's very important in helping to defend against Larry Bird. 34-30 Celtics, they have the ball. Minute and a half gone by, second period. Open man is Day. Magic, last touch by Parrish, it'll be Lakers' ball. Uh, Parrish slow to reacting to the big double team. He should have slid in there. Much better chance for the offensive rebound. Birds coming back in for Boston. Worthy from Michael Thompson. What a play. Sliding down the lane. Worthy getting the ball. He'll use that tomahawk stuff. 34 to 32. Celtics had a 10 point lead in the first period. And Parrish goes strong to the hoop. You've got to back off, Robert Parrish. Once he gets the ball, he'll use you to make that spin move. 9.35 on the clock, second period. Michael Thompson setting a pick for Magic Johnson. Now Ainge is on Thompson. He gets the basket. So Ainge, who has been having to worry about Magic Johnson, now finds himself against the taller Michael, who scored. He had a switch on the pick and roll. That's how he ended up with Thompson. Go to Parrish. Batted away by Magic. Three on two break. Lakers. Tommy, when the Lakers get a fast break off a turnover, forget it. When Worthy gets out on that wing and a guard has to try and pick him up, he's in the air before you know what's going on. High score at 36. And a whistle and a foul. And Michael Thompson has picked up his third foul. Here's the Laker defense in normal speed, fast break. And look at Dennis Johnson trying to get at the bigger James Worthy on the fly. No way. Three fouls on Michael. Like the Pacific Division, where the Lakers have a big lead, the Atlantic Division's a foregone conclusion for first place as the Celtics have a big lead over Philadelphia and the Bullets hot on the Sixers' trail. And the Celtics are off to a brilliant start on this eight-game road trip, winning three games handily, and they still have to go to Texas. But the Celtics like to prove a point when they go on a road at this point, don't they? When they go on the road, what they try to do, like the Lakers, is get out in front early so Casey Jones can have the security of a lead when he inserts his bench and so far it's worked on his trip speaking of bench Jerry Seasting do they rely on him to hit the open jumper when they double the big men and come in the ball game big factor in last year's title team tied at 36 845 to go first half Harris hits the jumper over Michael Thompson who remains in the game with three personal fouls and the Celtics have a lead total disdain for the double team that time by Parrish Worthy. Magic. Well, how did Jerry Seasting end up guarding James Worthy? KC's got to go back to the drawing board to try to get somebody on Magic Johnson who can give him a challenge, it seems. Magic has 18 points and seven assists. Oh! Dennis Johnson finds the open spaces. He has nine, tied with Bird for the Celtic lead. Under eight minutes to go. Good passing by the Lakers at the perimeter, and Michael Thompson tips it in on Scott Smith. With all that rotation, somebody forgot to block out Michael Thompson after the shot was taken. He's already paid dividends with the Lakers because Kareem, who has not scored, has had a big rest. He'll come in now. But Thompson already giving the Lakers what they hoped he'd give them. Illegal defense against the Lakers. Here's Michael Thompson coming inside Parrish for the offensive rebound. And Parrish should not have let him come in like that. And there's Thompson with the good fingertips, soft tipping. 
one warning on each club on the illegal defense. Kareem replaces Rambis, so now we're going to see Michael Thompson in a power forward position with Kareem in the lineup. You know, Michael Thompson coming into this ball game and playing the center spot used to be Rambis's job, and the Lakers were very small with that second unit. Now they're going to be much, much bigger. Technical foul on the illegal defense. Bird with 10 points now on the free throw. Bird battling for the loose ball winds up in Worthy's hand. Four on two and a whistle. And the Celtics were holding in the backcourt. Kevin McHale, his first foul. McHale knew that uh, they were going to get beat on a fast break if he didn't make that foul. So it's a pretty good foul. Clarify the illegal defense called was a technical foul. Michael Thompson, air ball, McHale coming down with it. Bird, he hasn't been open for many shots. Parrish over Kareem. Robert Parrish has 10 points, and he's hit his last five. And another illegal defense call against the Celtics, and that will result in a technical foul. Larry Bird went down to double Kareem Abdul-Jabbar before the ball got into Abdul-Jabbar's hands. Here's the rainbow shot over Kareem. Great shooting. Celtics have the lead. The Lakers have not had it yet in this one. All right, coming up at the half, Dick and Tommy, we have a piece we're calling Tom Chambers, the Superstar. And then another piece called Pictures at an Exhibition, some personal pictures from the All-Star Game. I want to tell you something, though. When you think about GQ Magazine and the Laker organization, who would you pick? Pat Riley, of course. He's the best dressed. He looks good. Guess again. Next week on the cover of GQ Mag Magazine, it's Magic Johnson taking on another role as the GQ Man. Let's go back to uh, Dick and Tommy. Thank you, Pat. Boy, Magic's doing everything, including scoring. And there is Magic Johnson as he will appear on the magazine cover. And speaking of Pat Riley, you know, one thing I don't think dawned on any of us is that the Lakers have never had the best record going into the playoffs. And uh, Riley says he wants it. And, of course, both teams coming into this game with identical 37-12 and 12 records. And that means a home court advantage in case they do meet in the finals. Yesterday, Dick, when we went to the practice, I was so impressed with Pat Riley working with the rookie, uh, Billy Thompson, on some very fundamental things. To take the time and the patience, admirable. Scott hit the technical off of the second illegal defense call. Lakers regain possession. Kareem on the board for the first time with 6.35 remaining. Ties the game for the sixth occasion in this first half. Conservation tactics, saving... Kareem stamina. That time they picked him to the ball so he didn't have to fight Parrish for the position. Thompson is trying to front McHale. That could be a dangerous move. Nobody throws better passes against fronting a big people than the Celtics do. Both of those two, Thompson and McHale, played at the University of Minnesota. The pupil was McHale. Scott missing, and there's Kareem in the right place at the right time. Did not throw out a good pass to Magic Johnson, who might have been able to try a three-pointer. And now the Lakers getting sloppy with the passing. Turn it over to the Celtics. With the Twin Towers, the Celtics doubling all the time means that one of the outside men will hit, have to hit from downtown. Bird low post against Worthy. Everyone else on the weak side. Fall away by Bird. Rebound inside by Dennis Johnson. Staggers out with the ball. 5.20 remaining in the first half. It's 45-43 Celtics. Scott on Seasting. 10 on the shot clock. McHale and Michael Thompson jousting. And McHale buries a baseline jumper. That's how we developed that jumper against Michael Thompson back at Minnesota. Five for seven for McHale. He has 12 points and is the leading scorer for the Celtics. Magic had 18 in the first period for the Lakers. 
Ten on the clock, under five minutes to go in the period. Seasting doubles worthy. Scott with Seasting in his face, misses. Kareem and a new clock for L.A. Worthy going strong. Left-handed shot by James Worthy. When he's down in the low post, James Worthy, you're facing the Grim Reaper. And Dennis Johnson, fouled by Magic Johnson. Two former Golden Gophers. Fight for position. Did that go on up in Minnesota? Their practices, Thompson used to block his shot, and that's how Kevin McHale developed that fall away. A hand as A.C. Green comes into the game, replacing Michael Thompson, who goes out with six points. Magic with his second personal foul, and Dennis Johnson is on the line. What a debut for Michael Thompson. Well, he's in real good shape. He's been playing a lot of minutes. The only thing is, does he know the play patterns? They feel he's... He can do it even after just uh, a morning session talking about it, and it looks like he can. Dennis Johnson, as well as Magic Johnson, have not been out of this ball game. They've played this entire first half. And as you mentioned, both of those players are nursing injuries. 49-45 Celtics. That's the time remaining in the first half. Pace slowed down very much here in the second quarter. Open is Scott. And the Lakers crashing the offensive glass, and A.C. Green draws the foul. Height has come in the ball game, and McHale is called for the foul, number two on Kevin. It was three on two rebounding for the Lakers. They all had an easy step in to get that ball. Here's A.C. Green. The Lakers have been out-rebounded in eight of their last 12 games. Coming into this year, they thought they wouldn't be able to handle the boards too well. But whatever they're doing, they're doing right. With the kind of record they've had and more than holding their own so far. And that guy that just took those free throws, I believe, is responsible for a lot of that good rebounding. He's their leader now in that department. A.C. Green, one out of two. 49-46 Celtics, under four minutes remaining in the first half. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn at the forum. McHale looks to draw a foul and gets two points. 14 now for McHale. He is the Celtic leading scorer in the game and on the year. Worthy. And traveling a call against A.C. Green. Larry Bird is leaving him all open at the head of the key, and Green felt that time he could take it to the hoop. Celtics slowing it up in a five-point lead. Their biggest lead was 10 in the first period. We've had six ties. Kareem now on McHale. Wild shot, and so that matchup works for the Lakers. They isolated McHale in the low post. The Lakers handled it. Magic. And Green, three-second violation. Bird came rushing at A.C. Green, and there was a three-second violation in the lane too much. If you look at the shooting, good shooting throughout this game. Well, the Lakers are getting fast break baskets. Now they're being uh, relegated to their half-court offense. Not quite as effective. Steal by Magic Johnson. And they'll call Dennis Johnson with a foul, his third personal foul. What a play by Magic Johnson to make that steal. Just grab the ball out as soon as Dennis started to throw it. Time out here. We're not a company. Bobby Chez defends his IBF light heavyweight championship crown against knockout force Willie Edwards. That's on CBS Sports Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern. And don't forget, next Saturday and Sunday, the PGA on CBS returns with the Los Angeles Open, sponsored by Nissan. Defending champion Doug Toole will be there. That's all next Saturday on CBS Sports. You're not supposed to be able to move your hands as quick as the ball can be passed by you. But look at what Magic does. What reactions. That is absolutely fantastic. Well, we talked about how red-hot the Celtics have been, and since Christmas, which was their landmark starting point a year ago when the Celtics lost to the Knicks in double overtime, they went to work then, and they're 21-3 since Christmas this time. 
Casey Jones has found a way to use his bench effectively. Sam Vincent, one of those men, in the game now, replacing Dennis Johnson, who has three personal fouls. So Sam Vincent guarding Byron Scott. Tight in the ball game. So Paris getting a rest. Kareem trying to get it into Magic. And a foul. If that's on McHale, that'll be three on Kevin. And it is. So McHale has three fouls. Mr. Inside offense for the Celtics. Picks up the foul. Here's Kareem. Sees the double team. And, uh, well, it could have gone no call as far as I'm concerned. Fourth team foul on the Celtics. Tight the rebound. Byron Scott has missed his last six shots. And the Celtics have a five-point lead as we're getting close to the two-minute mark. Here in the first half, McHale doubles. Vincent, foul line jumper, and Byron Scott leads the break for the Lakers. Celtics getting back quickly. Casey said that's one way to thwart the break. Get back. Scott, top of the key. Breaks his drought and hits the shot. It's 51 to 48 and under two minutes remaining in the first half. Very important basket for Scott's head. Get his confidence back. He was two for 10 before that coup. Tipped away and a reaching foul called against James Worthy and that'll be three on Worthy. And so it'll be interesting to see when we get into the second half, Tommy, which of these players with three fouls picks up number four quickly, if any. It would affect the Celtics probably more because Kevin McHale is their low post offense. Vincent controlling the ball. Crowd yelling for a turnover. Jess Kersey said no. Minute and a half on the clock. Vincent used his left body, left arm and body well. And the Celtics up by five. The Lakers have not had the lead in this ball game. That basket by Vincent with their first points off the bench today. Scott, Ainge, the rebound, nearly a minute to go in the first half. Celtics definitely slowing it down with this unit in there. McHale, fall away, beauty by Kevin McHale, and a seven-point Celtic lead under a minute to go. Biggest lead for Boston was 10 in the first period. When this unit is in there, it goes into Kevin McHale. A.C. Green. Magic trying to keep it alive. McHale clears, and Tommy, the Lakers, are forced to shoot from outside. They can't get any inside shots now. Well, that's why Scott made that one shot. He's got to hit, hit a couple, and so does Magic from the outside. Bird short on the fall away. 30 seconds to go and 22 on the shot clock. Lakers won't have the lead. They just want to narrow it. Rolls off the rim to Worthy. 55-50, Boston. And the Celtics can play for the last shot of the half. And what a half it's been. Magic with 18. All in the opening period. Celtics with good balance, led by McHale with 16. Three seconds and a three-point shot by Danny Ainge with one second to play in the half. And the Celtics have given Pat Riley something to chew on. A 58 to 50 lead at the half. They led all the way in the first half with good balance scoring. And the pace has gone their way. We'll be back with Pat O'Brien at the half from the Foreman Inglewood in just a moment. Six the Prudential at the half. Sponsored by The Prudential, offering a full range of insurance and other financial services. Well, you might want to call your friends and tell them there's a battle going on down at the Forum in Inglewood, California. It is the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Celtics lead it now 58 to 50. It's been a tough inside game. Magic Johnson has 18 points. This will be the last time these two teams will meet, unless, of course, they meet in the finals. They have a sold-out crowd here at the Forum. 17,000-plus fans who have come to see these two giants play basketball. They only played one other time this season, and the Lakers won that one in the Boston Garden, and you know how tough that has been. But they have come here to see him play for a second time. 
And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Once again, welcome to the Prudential at the half. And our, our theme today is the finish line. And certainly these two teams are looking for the finish line. That is the NBA Finals. Earlier today here on CBS, Bill Elliott won the finish line at Daytona. He drove 176.263 miles per hour to get his second win at Daytona. Well, last week, the guy who got to the finish line first, over 24 NBA All-Stars, was Tom Chambers, who in one day went from a sub for Ralph Sampson to a genuine certified superstar. Look at what's happened to me. I can't believe it myself. Suddenly I'm a first of all the first of all for the hometown Seattle Supersonics, Tom Chambers. I thought that I deserved to be in the game in the first place and, and hadn't and, and but I really wanted to. I really wanted to play in front of the home crowd and have my opportunity to play in the All-Star game. I didn't know if I'd ever have a better season than I'd had this year and I didn't like to see opportunity like that go away. But Chambers nearly let his opportunity to shine slip through his fingers as he missed some of the easiest shots an All-Star can get. He's missed his first four shots. That may be the last shot they'll give him. <laughs> After I missed those first four, I started putting pressure on myself and saying, geez, Tom, you know, you got to, you got to, you know, be sure of your next shot. Make sure that shot goes in. You can't keep mi missing because you're not going to get many more opportunities. But soon it was showtime. And when it was over, he had 34 points, the MVP trophy, a lot of new fans, all kinds of fans. Chambers uh, deserved uh, what he got in that game, and I'm glad he was there because without it, I probably would be one in four right now in Australia. As for Chambers, he could get used to the life of Riley. I haven't had the opportunity to play in front of those big crowds and with that much excitement and with, with, with the great players I was playing with, so it was something I've never felt before, but uh, I sure would like to feel it again. It was tremendous. I didn't like that. Tom Chambers, superstar. Well, it was quite an all-star weekend last weekend in Seattle, and by now you've probably seen all the highlights, all the pictures, and by now you've probably figured out you're going to see some more. You're right. Some shots you would know, some shots you would no doubt never see were it not for the following slideshow. We are calling it Pictures at an Exhibition. If a picture paints a thousand words... By the looks of it, a lot of you brought cameras to All-Star Weekend, I don't know how your pictures turned out. Here's a few of mine. Freeze frame! Here's Tom Chambers watching the three-point contest. We've got some better ones of him later. Larry Bird at practice. Looks nervous, doesn't he? A lot of meetings during the weekend. Here, east meets west. Here's a blurry shot of Pat Riley leaving that meeting. Caught up with KC in the hallway. He's saying, you know, I think I'll start Larry Bird. An exclusive shot of Dr. J, the only moment he wasn't surrounded by fans. Well, the guys were in a good mood. That's Isaiah. Here's, uh, whoops, there he is, the magic man. Mark Aguirre brought a winter coat. It didn't fit. Here's some fantasy shots. Dunking over the dunk king. That's Akeem Olajuwon with a block and a foul. Nap time, Sleepy Floyd. Here's, oh, how'd that get in there? That's a uh, friend's wedding last month. We all work hard on All-Star Weekend. A lot of meetings. Dick doesn't like meetings. Neither does Tommy. Here's a happier moment. Games into OT. Here's the East huddle. The West. Look at Joe Barry and Kareem. Here we are calmly planning the MVP ceremony with Commissioner Stern. Here we are near panic just before we came back from commercial to give Chambers the trophy. And finally, getting on one more plane with our producer who made me fly with him so we could have a meeting. <laughs> And one of the things Mike Burke says was, Pat, go right to commercial. So, when we come back, we'll visit the finish line in the Meadowlands at the Olympic Invitational Track Meet. As at the half rolls on from the forum after a commercial and a word from your local station. Stay with us. The forum in Inglewood, California. You know, this is where they played Olympic basketball, where the United States team under Bob Knight brought home the gold medals. And, you know, it doesn't seem like we are only a year away from the 1988 Olympics. Yes, the festivities are beginning to unfold. And last night, they held the Olympic Invitational Track and Field Meet at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And Dan Deardorff was there. In fact, he was there at the finish line. Here's a the high football. jumper. It makes sense. He has a 39-inch vertical leap, and he's going to try to transform this kind of talent, jumping over seven footers, into another kind of talent, jumping seven foot and over. He told me before the game he was a high jumper in high school, 
and his goal is to be able to jump and hit the top of the backboard. We wish him luck with that. Well, for now, Coop and the Lakers have their minds focused on beating the Boston uh, Celtics this afternoon, and we are about to begin the second half. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thank you for joining us at the half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. The NBA on CBS. Today's game is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one light beer. Converse. Converse is the official shoe of the NBA. And by Extra Strength Excedrin, the headache medicine from Bristol Myers. Fifty-eight to fifty, the Celtics lead, and there are some insignificant statistics to show you regarding this game. The Lakers rarely win when they shoot less than fifty percent. They've been getting the fast break going, but haven't converted because the Celtics are getting back on defense. And the Celtics, name of the game has been their inside scoring. Kareem, who has scored only two points, has his shot knocked away. There's the inside scoring led by McHale, 16. Kareem, as we said, only two. Nine fast breaks, but only 12 points. That's not a good number. Not for the Lakers. And it's Boston ball, last touched by Kareem. Casey Jones used his bench liberally in that first half, so the stamina factor may not be a problem, but all for the exception of Kevin McHale, who played 22 minutes in that first half. And he is their big low post offense. He's played a lot of time, picking up where he left off, and McHale now with 18 points. Magic Johnson had 18, but all in the first period, and the Celtics have matched their biggest lead of the game, 10. Magic Johnson on the fast break dynamite when the Celtics took that speed away from them they had a slow down magic not quite as effective Lakers have been limited to outside shots they didn't go in toward the end of the period maybe this will be a change for them as Johnson with 20 now you know magic's not giving up I don't know who is <laughs> Mikhail low post double team he's playing with three fouls and this will be against the Lakers. McHale and Dennis Johnson have three fouls for the Celtics. Michael Cooper has three for the Lakers. Worthy has just picked up. Worthy has three fouls as well. A.C. Green picked up one. Just here. A.C. Green trying to deny Kevin McHale position, fronting him, moving around him, making it difficult to pass the ball into Kevin McHale. But look, he's got it. Scott helping out. And another Laker foul. Two in a row. A.C. Green picks up two quick ones here. Once McHale gets the ball, Dick, he is so difficult to defend. He reads the defense, the double teams, when they're coming at him. He knows when to fake. He lifts people in the air. Then he slides by them with those long arms. We've talked about Magic Johnson in the MVP kind of year he's having. If the Celtics have an MVP candidate, you're looking at him right now. In addition to him being their set offense, he's like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to be for the Lakers, uh, McHale's inside game. But he's also playing the tough defensive, uh, or the tough offensive player on the other team. 10-point lead, 62 to 52. Kareem looking for something to happen. This is a skyhook. Knocked out of bounds, and it goes the same way. Kareem is one for six shooting. He's having a rough first half and leading into the second now. Scored only two points. Kareem, when he loses his rhythm, his shooting goes off. Magic Johnson hit his first, misses the second, but it's knocked out of bounds by Parrish, giving the Lakers new hope here. Worthy has not produced in the low post. The Celtics backing down, daring the Lakers to beat them from the outside. Myron Scott had a rough shooting first half. Worthy misses. Lakers getting a lot of chances, but they've been ice cold. Really ice cold. Rebound by Parrish and a chance for the Celtics to establish their biggest lead of the ball game. The Celtics, or the Lakers rather, are capable of erupting. McHale gives them that, a 12-point lead. And Pat Riley, who's looking for a sweep of the season series after winning at Boston Garden, finds his team trailing, 
Kareem misses from the baseline. And now it's Celtics again. Kale may be walking around on his knees by the end of this ball game. He's doing it all. Meanwhile, the Lakers can't hit anything. Bird on a great pass from Danny Ainge. And Larry Bird, who took only seven shots in the first half, has 12, and the Celtics have rolled up a 66-52 lead. Timeout called by the Lakers. Had problems on the bench. However, with Kite in the game, they've lost just a couple of points, so their bench has done the job so far, the Celtics. It's deceiving to say the bench players don't score. They're not expected to score. The offense is not directed at any one of the bench players. The real thing as to how effective they are is if they can maintain the margin of the lead that they had when they were in. Here's a guy that's producing some inside play. Perfect pass. Uh, Green was trying to give... Uh, the passer, all kinds of problems, but D.J. did it great. Here's a great pick by D.J., and Magic Johnson doesn't quick, quickly enough switch to pick up Bird. Great pass by Ainge, and Pat Riley said the Celtics may be the smartest starting five since the Knicks of the 70s. Worthy on a feed from Magic. The Lakers, two for nine shooting this period. Trail now by 12. Right there, the Lakers may have found something. Magic in the low post affected the first half. The Celtics doubled. Magic can pick them apart with passes. Green is out guarding Paris. Worthy on Bird circling around and Larry Bird. 14 points. Losing Worthy with picks. Worthy on offense. Ainge, Pesky. Defensively. They swing it around to Byron Scott who hits. They're going to need Scott's outside shooting because he's been open a lot today. The double downs on the big guys have been working for the Celtics. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the third period. 68-56. Lakers forced to come back on their home court in this one. Lakers playing defense very well. Three seconds on the clock. Harris keeps it alive. But the Lakers found the open man quickly on that segment. Dennis Johnson had the clock down to three before he took that shot. Ainge with magic in his face. And another rebound offensively by the Celtics, and Riley's got to be furious now. A guard should not get those kind of rebounds. And they're going to call the foul against Abdul-Jabbar, and that will be Kareem's first. Michael Thompson's going to go back in the ball game. He scored six points in his Laker debut in the first half. And A.C. Green sits down. So they're going to go with Michael Thompson and Kareem at the same time. Trying to match strength on the boards with the Celtics right now. Mikhail and Parrish, along with D.J., who made a great offensive rebound that time. Riley saying, we need some board strength. Dennis Johnson has scored 11 points. He has six rebounds and seven assists. So... So far, a fine all-round game for DJ. Casey Jones has brought out the best in this man. He has listened to Dennis Johnson, and that's what I think a lot of other coaches that he had prior to Casey never did do. The lead is 13 for Boston, 69 to 56, 750-50 remaining in the third. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn at the foreman Inglewood. Scott open again. He's not been consistent. He hits one, misses a couple. There's a long pass to Parrish for an easy bucket. At the right time, the middle of the third quarter, Kareem way behind Parrish. And a foul as Magic goes in. Parrish immediately up the floor, out around the foul line, knows that they have the rebound. And look how quickly Parrish gets out in the front of that fast break. Kareem half a court away, trying to catch up. Parrish's foul and Magic Johnson on the line. The Celtics with their biggest lead of 15. Magic will try to cut it to 13 here. Magic's penetration into the gut of the Celtics defense could be very important. Because he gets you moving, the back line moving, and so Magic can make those inside passes for Thompson and Kareem to score on. 22 points for Magic Johnson. Lakers have not had the lead at all in this game. Bird, Dennis Johnson. Larry Bird has the ability to find a man who's been hot. And the man who's hot in this game, among others, is Dennis Johnson, whose fine inside play has helped Boston immensely. Magic. Loose ball worthy. 
tipped away. Ainge, and a foul is called against Magic Johnson. James Worthy has been doing a great job on Larry Bird, not going for too many fakes, has forced him to take fall away shots. DJ now says, I'm getting inside you fellas, and slides one by Kareem. That's not easy. It's 73 to 58. The Celtics still on a roll. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, they went against each other in an NCAA final a few years ago. They've been on opposite sides in their pro career, but the only time they ever played together was last summer in an all-star game Magic Johnson organized for the United Negro Fund. And the two of them enjoyed e each other and enjoyed playing with each other in the game at Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles. And there is Magic and Bird. I'll tell you, it'd be great just to see these guys play together in earnest just one time, wouldn't it? Watch this play. Trailer man hits another guy coming up. That is creative fast break opportunity basketball. Since the Magic Bird era that began in 1979 and 80, the Celtics lead the regular season series 8-7. But they're 14 and 14, including the playoffs. So something's got to give, and today it will. Lakers perfectly capable of getting back into this ball game quickly. And they got Michael Cooper to help do that. Cooper is into the ball game. He's in the backcourt with Magic. Worthy, Kareem, and Michael Thompson also in there. It's Celtics ball with eight seconds on the clock. Kareem with two points. He's guarding McKay. Ainge. Worthy clears. In the middle of the Magic. All the way. And great defense inside. I don't know if it was Parrish or Bird. Someone got a hand on it. On the ball. Lake is quickly back, Dick, as uh, Ainge pulled it up. Dennis Johnson deflected it. Parrish hooked, misses. Follow-up misses. Cooper with six minutes to go in the third period, trying to generate something here for the Lakers. If they put that speed on the Celtics right now, they may have a chance of cracking them. Cooper misses long distance. McHale clears. The Celtics getting back defensively, as well as they've done in a long time. Bird. And the Celtics now lead it. 75-58, their biggest lead of the ball game. And the Lakers are a paltry 3 for 14 shooting this period. Worthy comes back with two. But the Celtics have stymied the Laker fast break by quickly getting back. They have gotten three guys back to blunt the three-man attack, which is so devastating of the Lakers fast break. And that's admirable, but it may be taking a toll on the Celtics coming into the fourth quarter, particularly against Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. Well, that's what we're going to wait to see, and the Lakers are ice cold from outside. As Casey Jones' game plan has worked to perfection thus far, Kareem committed the foul, his second, and McHale misses his first try. McHale and Magic Johnson are the game's high scorers, each with 22. McHale handles double and triple teams in such a fashion like I've never seen in the NBA, all, almost with total disdain. 5.15 to go, third period. The lead is 16 for Boston. Magic is foul driving in. Jess Kersey calls it on Dennis Johnson, is doing all kinds of pirouettes. That's number four on Dennis Johnson. When Magic Johnson uses the pick and roll play and then decides to penetrate, you've got to get out in front of him and directly in front of him, or otherwise he's going to score or create a good passing opportunity. Magic is nine for nine from the line, so he has penetrated enough today to go to the line that many times. 76-62 Celtics, 5-10 to go in the third. Celtics have taken the speed away from the Lakers. Unbelievable. Magic trying to deny Dennis Johnson. Harris with another offensive rebound for Boston. Celtics going into some shooting walls. Michael Thompson tips it away out of bounds. And Thompson and the rest of the Lakers thought it was last touch by the Celtics. Otherwise, they would have gone after the ball. They had some time and room. And now a 20-second timeout called by Casey Jones. 
We're going to watch Larry Bird cheat back on defense now. And he's the key guy. He's the slowest of the people the Celtics have. And all of a sudden, when they gain possession, Bird is already in perfect position to pick up a worthy or whoever is the third man on the Laker fast break. The Lakers with an eight-game lead over Portland, and they will not be overtaken for the lead, but they'll be uh, jockeying for position for the rest of them. Phoenix has been improved as of late. Next Sunday, by the way, the Lakers will journey east to take on the Philadelphia 76ers, who are a hurting bunch these days. That'll be noon Eastern time from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. By the way, the trading deadline is midnight Eastern time tonight. Ames missing the shot rebound, Magic Johnson, and so far the only deal of note is Michael Thompson going from San Antonio to the Lakers. And when the Celtics get tired, they start to miss their shots by front rimming them. Double team with McHale and Ainge on Magic. Parrish made a fine play, but it's still Lakers ball. I mean, the Lakers have had only 12 opportunities on the break and have come up with 12 points. That's not their game. They've got to get more out of their fast break than that. Kareem misses a sky hook. Rebound Magic. Celtics lead 76-62. We'll call a holding foul. Kareem was trying to jockey, and now Danny Ainge has picked up his third personal foul. As you look at a halftime college basketball score and a surprise with Marquette leading the Tar Heels. Lakers have not been able to find a hot hand. Hasn't been Scott, certainly not Kareem. Magic was early, and that was it. Cooper gets another chance on an errant throw, and Harris may have been the man committing the foul on Michael Cooper. But you're right, they don't have anyone since Magic Johnson's 18 in the first period to pick up the slack. They've had plenty of easy shots. They're normal shots. Guys coming across the middle, shooting hook shots, wide open outside shots, and just not been able to hit the bottom of the net. Harris's foul is his third. One of the conservation moves for the Lakers is for Kareem to go back on defense, not even contest for rebounds on free throws. It saves them running up the court at least one time. 76-64 in the crowd. Into this game once more as the Lakers will try to chop into what was a 17-point lead. Dennis Johnson misses Michael Thompson, and here's Worthy. He beat the defense down court, and the Celtics paid for it. Down to 10 now. Wide open is Dennis Johnson. Bird, great play by Bird, and a bullet pass from Dennis Johnson. Excellent patience by the Celtics to move that Laker defense. Lakers quickly back on the perimeter. Michael Thompson. This is the drive, and now Bird on the wing. Under three minutes to go, third period. 78-66, Celtics by 12. And Paris called for the offensive foul. That's number four on Robert. So Dennis Johnson and Robert Parrish each have four fouls for the Celtics. Timeout. 2.52 on the clock. Well, Michael Thompson fit in with the Los Angeles Lakers. You bet. You watch him grab the rebound, and then Cooper will pop out, and there will be a quick release pass to him to start the fast break. He already knows Laker basketball, and look what happens because of that quick outlet. Worthy all the way up on the fly for the layup. That's the way to get the fast break going. Lakers who lost to Houston in five games last year. Trying to regain control of the West. Michael Thompson hopes to help them there, and it's tipped up. I think looked like one of the Celtics might have had something to do with it. I'm not sure, but it hit the outside rim and then fell in. In any event, the Celtic lead is down to 10 again. A bird ended up having to play Michael Thompson, and that's probably the worst part of his game, defending low post people. There's the foul story. Celtics with two players with four fouls. Under two and a half to play in the third period. Lakers were down by eight at the half.
offensive foul and a technical foul. Offensive foul on McHale, he's fourth, and a technical called on McHale after that. Let's see what went on. That's Kareem trying to front them, and they got hooked in the, the elbows. I guess it could have got called anyway, any, any which way, but it ends up on McHale. Are you trying to say that you don't agree with that call? When they're banging down there in a low post, you can catch any one of several different points of contact. Fred Roberts making his first appearance of the game. Replaces McHale, who goes out. There's Roberts. McHale scores 23 points, but goes to the bench with four fouls. And maybe a blessing in disguise for the Celtics, Kevin McHale. A needed blow so he can come fresh in the fourth quarter. Michael Thompson to a driving worthy. Kareem out to Cooper. Cooper. No basket. Offensive foul. Cooper ran into Kite. Smart play by Greg Kite. Stepped right in. That's the type of thing that he's had to learn reading the offense and when to set himself up to take charges. Because when you said he good time for McHale to get a blow, you mean a rest. When you guys played and they still do, they say, give me a blow when you give go down to the blow. Bench. That's it. Under two minutes to go in the third. And Larry Bird is foul going in. And they've turned this one up a couple of notches. Magic Johnson has picked up his fourth personal foul. The first Laker to get four. Cooper, by the way, also has four. What the Lakers sense right now, Dick, is a chance to win this ball game with Miguel out. Magic is saying, it wasn't me that created that foul. And he's furious. Pat Riley's saying, it had to be somebody you else. You know, it's interesting that with all the histrionics, I think the officials respect Magic Johnson, who doesn't complain that much, and that's why they're liable, they're liable to take a lot more. And was he, he right? And he wasn't near it. It was really Michael Thompson that created the foul, a double zero, but they give it to Magic. Bird missed a free throw. He missed the first free throw, and... Now Jess Kersey is going to the scorer's table because you're right, the replay shows that Magic Johnson wasn't there. It was a good two feet away from where the contact happened on Bird. He won his case. He won his case. It's Michael Thompson with his third. Here it is from a different angle as Thompson immediately making the move to help out on Bird creates the foul. Bird misses both. And the crowd loves it. 78-69, the Celtics lead is 9, it was 17. You watch Magic take over now. They've got Kareem working on a smaller kite. Cooper for 3. Kite the rebound. So Magic Johnson still with 3 personal fouls. Still no good inside game from the Lakers, even with Kite in there. Magic on Bird, double team, quick passing. Kareem on the rebound with 113 on the clock and a chance to cut it to seven. It's good. I've seen him before. Well, you said Magic would go to work right here. Here's Kai trying to stop a penetrator. He angles him off, but in so doing, puts his numbers up against Magic. That's a tough job for a center to try and do. Angle off the penetrator from a direct angle to the basket. Three-point play for Magic Johnson, and it's now Celtics by six, 78-72. A minute to go in the third period. This place is rocking. Ames, high arcing shot, but there's Bird. Celtics missing their outside shots. Dennis Johnson. He misses. Here's Cooper. And he's fouled. They may have to come back to McHale soon. Or Robert Parrish, either one, to provide some inside play as the Celtics are going cold from the outside and the Lakers on the long rebound turning into fast break opportunities. The Celtics had a 10-point lead in the first half. The Lakers came back and tied it. Then it was eight points at halftime. Stretched it to 17. And now the Lakers are on a run right now. And it's 
and Michael Cooper can cut the deficit to four points. Dick, there's a rhythm to fast break basketball. If you score one, sometimes the second one comes quicker, the third even quicker. So the Lakers are on a 14-2 run here with 33 seconds to go and 15 on the shot clock in the third period. Illegal defense against the Lakers in a technical foul situation. That'll give the Celtics a chance to get one and then to run out almost the rest of the period. There are 25 seconds left, and they'll have a new clock of 24. Larry Bird, when Kevin McHale is not in the ballgame, is their prime offensive player. Worthy is doing an outstanding job against Larry Bird. So Dennis Johnson and now Seasting may have to hit from the outside. Only one second differential between the game clock that you see and the 24-second shot clock. And the Lakers are trying to make it difficult for the Celtics. Dennis Johnson gets the basket with four seconds to go. And it's 81-74. Magic. is going to make it happen one way or the other. Is that a three-point shot? You better believe it is. 31 points for Magic Johnson, and what a spectacular end to the third period with a score, 81-77 Celtics. And we'll return after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Basketball Association is sponsored by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Renault and Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA. And by Midas for mufflers, brakes, and shocks. Take it to Midas. Take it to someone you trust. Well, Tommy, normally Larry Bird breaks people's hearts and backs with shots like these. I'll tell you, he was well within his range, at least in his head. And now he's going to say, I can make those all the time. And a guy who used to do a lot of that, the Lakers general manager, Jerry West, who engineered that big acquisition of Michael Thompson this week. He made a big shot against the Knicks a long time ago, and he made a big shot over this weekend. <laughs> So they start the fourth period. Dick Stockton and Tom Heinsohn. The Lakers are on a 17-5 run. They cut a 17-point lead down to four. 81-77. Greg Kite still in there. Darren Day has come in for the Celtics, giving Larry Bird a brief. McHale back in, playing with four fouls. Dennis Johnson, the workhorse he's been. 18 for Dennis Johnson. He knows he's not hitting from the outside, so he's driving to the hoop as they're rotating. Left off the All-Star team, although you easily could have put him on there. He's really the fourth All-Star for the Celtics, and Danny Ainge not that far behind. Michael Thompson double team. Seasting is in there, guarding Cooper. Thompson turnaround. Big hoop. Ten points for Michael Thompson, the new boy in town. Not going to be new for long. 83 to 79. This is an important sequence because the Celtics going with their bench here, Tom. McHale misses. Grambus to Cooper. Scott did not get a good pass. Celtics got three guys back very quickly. Scott. Air ball. Rebound Dennis Johnson. So let's see whose bench will do the job right here. They need some inside play, the Lakers. Minute and a half gone by in this fourth period. 83-79, Celtics foul. Byron Scott, first personal foul and the first team foul of this final period. Dennis Johnson has seven rebounds and nine assists to go with his 18 points today. Michael Thompson tips it away from McHale. Sam, Sam Vincent, Vincent replaces Dennis Johnson, who gets a well-deserved rest. Johnson has been nothing short of brilliant this afternoon. 
Casey Jones trying to match up Dennis Johnson with Danny Ainge to make sure they get some rest while Magic is on the bench. Vincent. Rebound Cooper. Chance to cut the Celtic lead to a pair. They don't execute their fast break offense quite as well with Cooper in the middle. Scott, four for 16. They get it into Michael Thompson. Two on the shot clock. Worthy is fouled by Darren Day. Magic Johnson getting a breather with 31 points, including that three-point shot at the buzzer. But Day commits the foul, and going to the line will be Worthy. I like what Magic Johnson did after he hit that three-pointer. <laughs> Come on, you fans. Are you with us or well, against us? Well, he led the cheers at the All-Star <laughs> game after the West moved in front in overtime. Timeout with 9.46 to go. Two nationally ranked teams, Kansas and St. John's, Larry Brown and Lou Carnesecca square off next Saturday on NCAA basketball on CBS beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern time and then the Budweiser boxing series Bobby Chez against knockout artist Willie Edwards that's for the IBF light heavyweight championship on CBS Sports Saturday at 3 o'clock and then the Los Angeles Open sponsored by Nissan beginning at 4 o'clock Eastern time third round coverage on a big sports day and a big sports weekend on CBS Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has scored only two points and the significance there is that his streak of 742 consecutive double-figure games in the regular season is in severe jeopardy right now. Although 9.46 to go, he can pick him up in a bundle, but he's got to be in there to do it. The Lakers count on him in the last four minutes of the ball game, so if he can heat up, he's liable to break, uh, get back into that double-figure column. May not be the thing on his mind, though, and the rest of the Lakers, the way they have been so focused this year when everyone figured Houston was going to now take over the mantle as the dominant team in the West. The Lakers have turned their game up a notch, and they're going to have to do it here to pull this game out, and they're three behind the Celtics right now. Well, here's a man that uh, plays the low post when Kareem was not in the ball game. With Thompson on the team now, they'll use him a lot more. Worthy will have to score more out in the open court. Worthy has 20 points. Magic Johnson, 31. Michael Thompson, 10. Those are the double-figure scores for L.A. Rambis is on Parrish, Worthy and Bird. Rambis on a switch picks up Bird. McHale and Michael Thompson whistle, no basket. And Michael Thompson has picked up his fourth personal foul. Lakers are out challenging every pass right now. Don't be surprised if they don't pick one off. Seasting. First shot of the game, and he makes it count. Jerry Seasting. It's now 85-81. Boston. Worthy facing the basket momentarily. Over McHale. 22 for Worthy. Once again, it's 85-83. Keep in mind, the Celtics had opened up a 17-point lead in the third period. Isolating and now doubling Bird. Vincent. And Magic Johnson with a little rest comes back in the ball game. And Dennis Johnson does the same. Neither coach in this chess game want to keep their top guards on the bench for long. Celtics very small in the backcourt right now with Seasting and Sam Vincent, so Magic will have a decided height advantage. Dennis Johnson has to wait before he comes back in there, but he'll be coming back. Cooper for three. And the Lakers have regained the lead after trailing by 17. On a Cooper three-point bomb. 8.25 remaining, and the first time today the Lakers have had the lead. Court violation wasn't touched by the Lakers and they'll get the ball back and KC has the furrowed brow now good aggressive defense that time by the Lakers forced that errant pass by Sam Vincent what's brought the Lakers back I think when McHale went to the bench they picked up their spirits and said we can win this thing and sometimes in a big game like that that's all it takes plenty of time on the shot clock 
Seasting gambling for the steal. Stop. And the Celtics do get it back on a fine defensive scrapping effort. What defense by Bird. He waits for you to bring the ball behind your head, and then he'll block it. Lakers with a one-point lead, just under eight minutes to go in the fourth period. Cooper is on Bird. Enough said. Seasting in the corner. Two for two for Jerry Seasting. He's the only one that's still got his outside shooting legs together. And the Celtics take the lead by one. And Kareem getting set to come back in. Bird is on Cooper. Cooper on Bird. Michael Thompson. So Thompson travels and it'll be Boston ball and Kareem will come in the game for Rambis and once again you'll see a Kareem and Michael Thompson in the lineup at the same time as you see Michigan State beating Michigan in an upset in Big Ten basketball today. Celtics with the ball in a one point lead. Nearly seven minutes remaining in the fourth period. Eight on the clock. And an L.A. foul, it'll be the third team foul against the Lakers, and for Kareem, his third personal foul. The defense in this ball game has been outstanding by both teams. Thompson knocks it away. Celtics have gotten back to stop this Laker fast break, and all of a sudden the Lakers are becoming very aggressive in denying the ball to anybody the Celtics want to pass it to. Timeout. There's our story. We'll be back to the forum after this. You're going to see Larry Bird play some great defense here. The offensive man comes strong to the basket. He thinks he's got the shot, but Larry Bird blocks it from behind. I mean, he really gets you going. And you want to see the Lakers come up the other end. They double-team Larry Bird, but Cooper with the quick feet gets right out at Sam Vincent and force him to walk. I mean, that is super defense. The Celtics have lost more than they've won in real close games this year. They're shooting 48% and the Lakers 43%. Keep in mind, the Lakers rarely win when they shoot under 50%. Under seven minutes to go. Seasting and Dennis Johnson, the guards. McHale, Parrish, and Bird, the starting front court for Boston. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Bird with Cooper. McHale tries to get a shot up. Seasting finds an open space and hits again. Jerry Seasting is three for three off the bench to give the Celtics a three-point. Was he alert? There was only one second left on that 24-second clock when he took the shot. Kareem hits the skyhook. Only his second basket of the ball game. Four points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and yet the Lakers fail by only one. But he takes the key shots coming down the stretch in that low post. He did in the fourth period at Boston Garden in December, didn't he? He sure did. Burr trying to post up Cooper. Dennis Johnson wide open. What a game for Dennis Johnson, who has 20 points. Hampering Larry Bird a little bit. He's not been able to get free quite as much as he has on this trip. Bird, though, has 19. And Kareem only four points away from double figures for 743 straight time. I'm going to write a song for Kareem. Swing to the baseline <laughs> for the hook shot. It's kind of gone a long way with that shot, hasn't it? <laughs> And illegal defense called against the Lakers. That's the fourth time today. And there's going to be a technical foul. Byron Scott, the guilty party, as James Worthy returns to the game, replacing Byron Scott. So now a bigger team in there for the Lakers, Tom. That may mitigate against them, though, Dick. They have outstanding speed. And, uh, well, they're going to, Cooper's going to be in the backcourt. They'll still have that speed and Worthy at the forward spot. So they'll be bigger and maybe just as fast. Five twenty remaining. Now Worthy is on Bird. Great pass by Bird. He can find you even if you're at the other side. And Dennis Johnson with 22 now. 
And it's 94 to 90 in favor of the Celtics. He made the Laker defense spread. Lakers have had the lead once today at 86-85. Worthy with a short jumper. Under five minutes to go. They send one man through and a second cutter comes behind him and a lot of the times he's wide open. Dennis Johnson with 22. Bird has 20. McHale 23. The leading scores for the Celtics. Magic with 31 is the overall game high score. Four on the shot clock as Dennis Johnson and Worthy got into it. Cooper dives out of bounds and it's a now the Lakers are claiming that the 24 second clock expired and that's the call no no they changed it Celtics will have five seconds that was close that the ball went out of bounds before the 24 second clock had expired that was a close one yes it was so they have five seconds now to try a shot Celtics leading by two there it is that's the 24 second shot clock McHale pushed out of bounds by his former schoolmate Michael Thompson. I wonder if they were in the same frat. <laughs> Didn't look like it that time. I don't think it? so. Michael Thompson now with five fouls. One more and he's out of there. 4.15 remaining. Harris is fouled. And the Lakers are now in the penalty, which means that the Celtics will go to the line and shoot two shots. And the foul is on Magic Johnson. Let's wait. Four fouls on Magic and Paris shooting. Not on that one. You can read him there. The Lakers are forcing all the Celtics big people out up the lane a little bit further out than they like to get position. So their inside game may not be as effective coming down the stretch. Magic with 31 leads. Worthy as 24. Michael Thompson 10. He's playing with five fouls. Four minutes now remaining in the fourth period. Worthy. What great control. And you could see the reaction on the Laker bench to what Worthy did in midair to bring the Lakers to within a pair. That was spectacular on the swing, and he just caught Bird rushing at him. 12 of 16 for James Worthy. Red hot this afternoon from the field. Now he's got a defense Bird. Seven on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson, Seasting, hasn't missed yet. That's his first miss. Kicked out of bounds. Celtics ball with 3.28 to go. Here's Worthy. It was Michaela had to race out at him, and look at him just overpower Larry Bird going strong with the left hand to boot. Well, Tommy, Jerry Seasting, who hit three out of four coming off the bench, is going to be replaced by Danny Ainge. Time to get the big guns in there. John Robinson of the Rams knows all of that. Time out here at the Forum. I've got a secret I want to share. This with you. game has fulfilled its expectations. You remember at the start we talked about the great matchups, champions. Well, how about world champions of the 80s? Six out of the last seven years, either the Lakers or the Celtics have been world champions, and they're playing like that today. And Tommy, they're playing as if they're serious about getting back into the big arena for the finals again this year. The last couple of minutes of this ball game, you're going to see the smartest two teams in the league go at each other. Looking for weaknesses, matchup advantages, and so far the defense has been outstanding. Not many matchup advantages. Lakers have had to play catch up. The uphill climb most of the day, down by 10 early. They caught up, then they were down by 17 and caught up and took their only lead, trailing 96 94. But Celtics have the ball with 3.18 to go. Ainge, who just came in the ball game, this is Michael Thompson. I think Michael Thompson, before the game, was told that if you play well, you play longer. If not, it'll be a short debut. He's played well. Celtics had to rely on an outside shot that time. And Parrish intercepts the pass that Thompson was trying to telegraph for James Worthy. An alley-oop that didn't move. 96-94 Celtics. 
Every move the rest of the way critical. McHale misses Cooper the rebound. Now he's so fearful of Thompson, and McHale rushed that shot. Magic has a screen from Worthy, does not use it. Kareem, knocked away by Bird. Return pass. Ains driving. And they'll call the blocking foul, and it was Larry Bird who made the big play on that turnover. What anticipation for Bird. He is fantastic on reading what the op opposition's going to do. He just stepped out on a double team, look at him slide into the picture, knowing where the open man would be, knocks it away, but he doesn't have the speed to outrace Cooper. Five fouls on Cooper. And we want to remind you at the conclusion of the game, Tommy Heinsohn and I will select the Miller Lite player of the game. In conjunction with the award, Light Beer will present a check in the amount of $1,000 in the player's name to the Thurgood Marshall Black Education Fund. Celtics by three after Ainge converted only one of two. Cooper and Magic in three-point territory. Cooper, he's hit one today. Magic with four on the clock goes for two and hits. Two-point shot, and it's 97-96 Celtics. Great patience by the Lakers stick to find the open man. 33 for Magic Johnson. Under two minutes to play. McHale doubled. Dennis Johnson had a shot, passed it up, looking for something better. Four on the shot clock. Dennis for two. Just missed, and the Lakers can take the lead here. Magic. And a foul as well. Played by Magic. Up the court it comes. Ains trying to angle him off. You can't get too close to Magic, otherwise he spins off you. He's doing everything, including leading the cheers this year. But Magic misses the free throw, and the Lakers will have to be content with a one-point lead with that much time remaining in the fourth period. Each side with plenty of timeouts remaining. Magic with 35, but Parrish comes in and gets the basket to give the Celtics a one-point lead. Would have been a foul on that play, too, Dick. And the Lakers want to call timeout with 108 to go. You won't get any more excitement from two great teams than this. Tonight on 60 Minutes starts as usual with 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, then Designing Women, Nothing is Easy, and Hard Copy, all tonight on CBS. Going to see Larry Bird right here come off and use a Robert Parrish pick that's going to make Kareem Abdul-Jabbar come up and respect Larry Bird's uh, outside shooting ability, and then Bird reacts by making a great pass to Robert Parrish. Here he comes, using the pick just beautifully, and Kareem out, and Parrish on his way, and there was a potential foul to boot, but no call. Lakers have the ball, trailing by one, the only leads they've had, 86-85, and now 98-97 before the last basket by Parrish. One minute to go. Eight on the clock. Kareem. Gives the Lakers the lead by one, and Kareem has eight points. And Tommy, Kevin McHale, and Larry Bird have scored only two points this period between them, and no field goal. The defense of the Lakers taking the ball out of their hands. Harris. A big miss for the Celtics. And the Lakers, using the clock, will try to open up a three-point lead, or maybe better. Magic for two. One oh two ninety nine timeout Boston. Had to leave Magic all alone, and he responded. And look at this reaction. It's whoop de doo time. He scored 40, Tommy, Friday against Indiana. 77 points now in two games. 37 today. That's, we, 
That's MVP stuff, Yes, Nick. I was about to say that same thing. Against the best, the champion Celtics. Now what? Three-point shot for the Celtics. Look for it. 20 seconds. You can see the time. They go to Paris for a quick two, and there are 16 seconds. So the Celtics use just four seconds and are going to foul Kareem with 14 seconds remaining. And the Lakers leading by one. You know what the Celtics did that time? They expected the Lakers to come out and deny a three-point shot. That opened it up for the two big guys of the Celtics to take it strong to the hoop. A little reverse psychology by Casey Jones. Now, Kareem has to hit these shots. Look at the Lakers. They're on their knees at the bench watching this thing. How involved they are. Kareem needs two to hit double figures. <laughs> are they involved or what? He's got it. Ten points for Kareem. Timeout, Boston. Now, Tommy, are they going to go for three this time, or do you think the same thing going inside? Well, if they get the ball inside, they got to hope that somebody will foul them, and then they got to make a, uh, a a quick steal, perhaps. But the Lakers, if they're smart, they will give them the two-point shot and then try and gain possession, and then they'll get fouled. Play for the three-pointer. Okay, play the Celtics to take the three-pointer, and if need be, let them take the two-point shot. Don't foul them. And then, of course, the Celtics are going to have to foul the Lakers. So this game could be decided on the line or ultimately a three-point shot. And Casey Jones is going over. Not so much what they're going to do now, but maybe the next time they have the ball because you know the Celtics are going to try and go inside, but maybe not. Maybe they'll go for the bundle now. Well, they've got some good outside shooters. If you see Seasting showing up on the court right now, it's a safe bet to say he's going to be doing it. They might live Parrish, but that's a dead giveaway. I think that right now they will probably play it the same way they played it before. There's still plenty enough time. Take three seconds to get the inside shot. Once the Lakers inbound it, foul again if need be. Amazing that Larry Bird and Kevin McHale, the two big guns, all season for the Celtics have not made a field goal in this period. Bird has not even taken any shots in the fourth period. The, the defense on Bird has been outstanding by Worthy and then Cooper to take over. So they've harassed and played real close to him. But McHale, I think, was both the double team and the fact that he plays an awful lot of minutes that's taking effect. All right. There's McHale, who has 23. Bird is 20. Dennis Johnson, 22. And Harris with 18. Ainge in double figure, so the starting five has done it again, and Bird will inbound. At stake here, the best record in the NBA. Not easy to inbound the ball against the Lakers. McHale against Michael Thompson. Harris gets the basket with seven seconds to go and look for a quick Celtic foul if they can't get an immediate steal. say it's Lakers ball they did not get the ball in bounds I believe well it hit somebody and uh, they say it went out of bounds off Ainge but it could have hit Ainge and then gone to Worthy who was standing out of bounds well this is something we're going to come back and look at with seven seconds to go because the Lakers will have the ball they have the lead you guys were easy last year Tommy, it looks as if Ainge was the last man to touch this ball. Well, Ainge comes up and challenges Michael Cooper here. He knocks the ball, and the Celtics claim ultimately that it hit Worthy while he was standing out of bounds. And really what happened was that Ainge knocked it on the out-of-bounds line, and it hit Worthy after it bounced out of bounds. And look at Ainge saying, give me justice. So seven seconds to go. The Lakers will have the ball in a one-point lead, making the Celtic task that much diff more difficult. And next Sunday, you'll see the Lakers again and when they take on the Philadelphia 76ers from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And one of the last chances, of course, to see the great Julius Irving. And this is his final swan song of a brilliant career. Noon Eastern time next Sunday on CBS. Lakers ball and they have shot 11 of 13 this period after going for 42 percent the first three so the good shooting team they made it up in a hurry and they'll bring it out at midcourt. 
Celtics not getting on the inbound man. They're going to try and get to the guy. Doesn't work. Magic is fouled with four seconds to go. So Magic will go to the line if he makes two. The Celtics still have four seconds to try a last-ditch three-point shot to send the game into overtime. Magic has assumed the load of carrying this team to a championship. He's just been unbelievable in this ball game and in everyone I've seen so far this season. 13 of 14 from the line. Timeout Boston. They're down to four seconds and not much at issue as to what the Celtics have to do. It's three point or no count for them now. Why do 32 million Americans? The Lakers lead the Celtics 106 to 103. At stake, the best record in the NBA and a chance for the Lakers to sweep the season series. Now, is it strictly an open and closed option for Boston to go for three? Do the Lakers have anything to say about it? Yes, they do, Dick. Uh, there's some three-point shooters. But Bird and Ainge, if they are going to take the shot, if the Lakers end up going to try and foul them before the shot, they risk the danger of the shot still going up there and making it making it and then having a four-point potential from the Celtics. So uh, I, I wouldn't foul him. I wouldn't foul him. You got to play right now that they're, they're not going to make the shot. Connor Henry, a rookie who started the year with Houston and a dead eye shot from outside is in there. The Celtics have their best outside shooters in there. Seasting, Ainge, Bird, Henry, and Dennis Johnson. Four seconds to go. Trailing by three. Bird wants the ball. Bird fires it up. The game is over. A tremendous battle between two of the giants of the NBA, the Boston Celtics and the L.A. Lakers, and it's the Lakers who prevail 106 to 103. As Bird, he gets two defenders racing at him. They jump straight up to make him leap back and lose the momentum of his leaping ability, so he's got to throw it really hot off the glass. And our Miller Lite player of the game, who else? Irvin Magic Johnson, 39.7 rebounds and 10 assists. He hit the big baskets and has led the Lakers today as he has all season. Light beer from Miller is proud to present a check for $1,000 on behalf of Magic Johnson to the Thurgood Marshall Black Education Fund. So for Tom Heinsohn and Pat O'Brien, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from the forum where the final score, the Lakers 106, the Celtics 103. Join us next Sunday when Dr. J and the Philadelphia 76ers face these Los Angeles Lakers, which could be on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports.